1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10. Um, but since we got a little time, we'll read. We'll read a little bit of it. We'll just start at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 10. Oh, wait, verse uh, 1. Start at verse 1, yeah. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Right. So Paul was a leader. All right. Paul was a leader in, in Israel. OK, mind you that in his former life, he was a persecutor of the church. All right. He killed many, robbed or right, did all of that. Give me the book of Galatians. We can start right there. All right. So we get a full understanding of what this uh, what these verses is actually going into. Give me that in Galatians 1, I believe it's verse either 10 or 12. I ain't looking at it. You see it? Okay, here I go. All right. Uh, start at verse 12. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 12. Come on. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Christ, I'm sorry, not Christ, but Paul, he's telling you. That he did not receive his understanding from man. All right. He received a revelation from Jesus Christ. Uh, read on. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past Come on. in the Jews' religion. Right. His conversation in times past uh, against the Jews' religion was that what? He was persecuting Christians. Read on. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God mm -hmm. and wasted it. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation. In my own nation. He says he profited in the Jews' religion. Remember, his um, his sect was a Pharisee, okay? So he said he profited by the church. Meaning what? When they had their feast days, what would he do? They would take from the people, all right? They were extortioners. That's what they would do. All right, read on. Being more exceeding zealous of the traditions of my father. So he's telling you, he's telling you, he's saying I was more zealous of the traditions rather than actually adhering to the word of God. That's what the church became. OK, uh, read on. Verse 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb. And called me by his grace. So he's telling you, yeah, I may have been a Pharisee. I may have been from the tribe of Benjamin, a Jew. But Christ called me out of wickedness. It's the same thing with the Christian church. They think that they got it together. They don't have it together. A lot of us were in the same position. Okay, and God called us. All right, come on. To reveal his son in me mm -hmm. that I might preach him among the heathen. Among the heathen. Who is that? That's the heathen. That would be justified, according to Isaiah 45 and 25, which is the nation of Israel. Okay, remember, he was an apostle of the Gentiles, an apostle of the scattered Israelites that are living like Gentiles. Read. Immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. neither. Now, from there, because what did he do? He didn't, um, and when you read the book of Acts 9, when Paul, uh, when Christ revealed himself unto Paul, Paul didn't play around with it. He immediately began to do the work. Now let's read that since we got some time. Let's go to Acts 9. Start at verse 9. We'll read down a little bit. This is after Paul saw the vision. All right, watch this. Acts chapter 9 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Right, so Paul was three days without sight. He didn't eat anything. Come on. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, mm -hmm. and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, Tarsus. of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. Right, so before Paul's... Uh name was changed he was known as Saul of Tarsus read on and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him and he that he might receive his sight come on then Ananias answered Lord I have heard by many of this man 
how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Right. We just read that in Galatians, the first chapter. He persecuted the church. Come on. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Right. So the most I said, well, Christ said, hey, don't worry about that. I'm fully aware of his track record of what he used to do against the church. He's a chosen vessel. Just like many of us were called, you understand? Chosen vessels. We may have been drug dealers, murderers, gangbangers, whores, whatever it may be. But God saw fit for you to be chosen. All right, come on. To bear my name before the Gentiles. Before the Gentiles. Before the Gentiles. Read. And kings and the children of Israel. Come on. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my namesake. So understand this. Paul, he knew what would befall of his life he showed him the things that he would suffer meaning what yes paul saw when he would get beheaded but he didn't play around he continued to do what as soon as he received it he did the work until death read verse 17 mm -hmm. and ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said brother saul the lord even jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Watch this. And immediately there and what? And immediately. And what? Immediately. Come on. There fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. Come on. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened, and then saw certain. And then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. All right. So he was with the disciples at Damascus, meaning what? Those were the disciples who were his superiors. You understand? They were over him. Paul showed respect. All right. Read on. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. So he didn't play around. He didn't contend with the flesh and be like Jonah. Remember Jonah, he wanted to go back and forth, back and forth. Paul ain't do that. As soon as Paul received his sight and he ate and got his strength, he was about to work. Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Read 1 and 2 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Come on. Be ye followers of me, even, even as I also am of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Now, watch this. Give me Sirach 33 real quick. All right, so you got a little background on Paul. Mind you, he was taught by Christ himself, okay? So Paul is telling you, follow him the same way you would follow Christ. Why? Because Christ himself said he's a chosen vessel, okay? Give me that in Sirach 33 and 18. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 18. Come on. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken with their ears. Ye rulers of the congregation. You see that? It says, hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken with their ears, ye rulers of the congregation. So, um, read on, read on. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest, and give not thy goods to another, lest it repent thee, and thou entreat for the same again. Now, it says, hear me, O great men of the people, and hearken with the ears, ye rulers of the congregation. Paul would be what you call a ruler of the congregation or a leader, meaning what? He's telling the people to follow him, so he's keeping what? The preeminence, like it will go on to say in this particular chapter. Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11. So he's establishing what? He's establishing order, okay? All right, and he's going to list the order. All right, go back, read 2 and 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Come on. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, mm -hmm. and the head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So you got to understand, Paul started all of this with, be ye followers of me as I'm follower of Christ. So he's telling you that it's an order. Everybody's not on the same level, okay? And he goes with the hierarchy. He says, God, Christ, man, and woman. All right, so understand that. This whole passage is about the establishment of order. All right, read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered 
dishonoreth his head. Right. So it says, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. When it says his head covered, that's going into his physical head. This thing right here. All right. Then it says, dishonoreth his head. No, that's talking about his spiritual head, which is Christ. Give me the scripture about uh, prophecy. Prophecy. What is prophecy? Revelation. Mm -hmm. Chapter 19 and verse 10. Come on. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Right. So the, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay. Give me First Chronicles 25 real quick. All right. Because there's different forms of prophecy or to prophesy. All right. Um, read that. You want verse 1? Yes, sir. That one. First Chronicles chapter 25 and verse 1. Come on. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph. Asaph was in charge of the music. All right. Read on. And of Heman and of Jethuin, who should prophesy. With, who should what? Who should prophesy. Read. With harps. With what? With harps. Read. With pol posteries and with cymbals. And the number of the workmen according to their service was. Right. So it's showing you what? Even when music is played, okay? When music is played, you know, when it's, uh, the scriptures are being brought out, all right, we're still supposed to uncover our head. I know brothers like to, you know, make fashion statements and have hats and all that stuff. No. Even when the music is played, you're still supposed to uncover your heads as men, all right? Let's go back to um, 1 Corinthians 11. One verse five. Yep. First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse five. Read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Now it says, but every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Read. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Right. So. That's self-explanatory because the men are supposed to do what? Cover their head whenever in prayer or prophesy, prophesying. Now, just to go back to the law, let's go to the book of Numbers real quick. I believe it's 30. Numbers. Because our uh, physical head is the head that's on our body, but our spiritual head is Christ. And the sisters, they also have a physical head, but their um, earthly head is the man. Their earthly head is the man. Give me Numbers 30. Start at verse 1. Watch this. Numbers chapter 30 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes of concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Mm -hmm. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Come on. If a woman also vow a vow. Unto now, the it says if a woman also vow a vow. So in verse 2, it goes into the man vowing a vow or making a promise or a prayer. All right. To the Lord. Meaning there is no body else that can change that, handle that, or do anything to it. Once a man makes that bond or that vow, it is what it is. Okay. Uh, let's read on. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, mm -hmm. being in her father's house. In being her in youth, her what? In her father's house. Now, actually, read on. Read on. Being in her father's house uh -huh. in her youth. And her father hear her vow and her bond wherewith she had bound her soul. Now, it says being in her father's house as a youth. All right. Keep that in mind. Read on. And her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vow shall stand. All her vow shall stand. So if a father comes around and he hears her vow or her prayer and he doesn't say anything, he holds his peace, that vow shall stand. Read on. And every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. Watch this. But if her father disallow her. Now if her father hears it and he disallows it, he doesn't approve with it. Come on. In the day that he heareth. And any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul 
shall stand. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. Right. So he said, nope, I don't agree with what you just said. I don't agree with that uh, vow, that prayer. Lord disallowed it. All right. Now read verse four one more time for me. Verse four. And her father hear her vow. Stop. It says, and her father hear her vow. Now let's go to Timothy. Let's go to Timothy real quick. Watch this. Watch this. So remember, in verse 1, Paul did what? He established the order, right? Watch verse uh, chapter 5, verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1. Come on. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. But do what? Entreat him as a father. You see that? So Paul, to the sisters with no lords, guess what he was? He was a father. You understand? You understand? That's what it was. So they had no covering. Paul would be their covering. Okay? Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Where we left off, officer? We just finished 5. Verse 5. Okay, let's go back. Let's read 5 and 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 5. Come on. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered mm -hmm. dishonoreth her head. Read. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Right. So it says, if you dishonor your head, you understand, by not respecting either your Lord or your spiritual leader, you're dishonoring him. That's what you're doing as if you were shaven. Because a woman's glory, like it says um, down in the chapter, a woman's glory is her hair. You understand? That's, that's how the Most High God made the woman. That's how he beautified them. Okay? Uh, let's read on. Verse 6. Mm-hmm. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be, sho be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. It says, let her be covered. All right. Um, it says, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Read on. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Right. Uh, read on. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2 and uh, 14. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14. Watch this. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Right. So a lot of times, well, majority of the time in this day and age in, in America, Babylon the Great, they try to put men and women as equals. That's not how God created it. All right. We're not equal with Christ. You understand Christ not equal with God. So why would a woman think that? Give me my one of my favorite ones, Jeremiah 31 and 22. A direct result of sin. All right, that is that Babylonian mindset. It is not of God. It is not in the scriptures. Not in the scriptures. All right, uh, read that. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Come on. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. That's, an, compass a man. That's the new thing in the earth because of sin. Go to um, Psalms 45 real quick. Psalms 45, and I believe it's verse 10. All right, it was never intended to be like that. All right, not, that's against God's order. Um, yep, read that. Psalms 45 and verse 10. Come on. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Mm -hmm. Forget also thine own people. Read. And thy father's house. When you're, when uh, a sister is about to get married, this is what she's supposed to do. Forget her own people and her father's house. It's not saying to disrespect them. It's telling you to do that because you are about to get a new hedge, a new leader, a lord. Read. Verse 11. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. Read. For he is thy lord. You see that? For he is thy lord. For example, our Lord is Christ. The woman's Lord is the man. Yeah. That's what you sisters got to understand. Did somebody just say bring it out? Somebody said bring it out. Well, all praises. But it's the truth according to the scriptures. All right, read verse 11 again. Verse 11. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, mm -hmm. for he is thy Lord. Watch this. And worship thou him. Worship thou him. Hey, I didn't write it. Understand this, sisters. You know how you get to the kingdom, right? 
They don't want to admit that thing. Sisters don't want to admit that. The way you get to the kingdom is by serving the black man. That's how you get there. That's why y'all mind is all jacked up. Y'all can't function. Y'all don't know what to do because you's too busy trying to do your own thing. Make it easy. You the weaker vessel. Just follow. That's all you got to do. And we ain't telling you to follow a Negro because that's what majority of y'all think. Oh, I can't follow no man. Give me Sirach 37 and 12. I'm not telling you to follow a wicked Negro. We're telling you to follow a righteous man. Okay? Watch this. Sirach. Chapter 37 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. But be continually with a godly man. It says what? Be continually with a godly man. Be continue with a godly man, read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. How would you know he keeps the commandments? You know that? You know how you would know that? Is if the first time you met him, you didn't open your legs. That's how you would know. A lot of you sisters, y'all don't know, because as soon as he smile at you, you get to giggling. He take you to get a Whopper value meal, and later that night, you let him do the do. And you like, he's a good man. And then two weeks later, he ditches you, but he leaves a present. And that present is a baby boy, you understand, that he wants nothing to do with. And then you're like, I can't stand black men. No. Nope. You should be, I can't stand myself. You understand? Because God didn't tell you to do that. God said to prove him. That's the only way you're going to know if he's godly or not. You have to observe for in a certain amount of time in order to find, you know, is this, is this a man of God or not? That's how you, that's how you figure it out. Um, drop that. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11. We almost, we almost done. Uh... Yeah, verse 8. Verse 8. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Right, the woman of the man. Oh, give me Genesis. Give me Genesis 3.16. Genesis 3.16. All right, so once women understand this, when we get to verse 10, it's going to be self-explanatory. It's going to be very easy to be understood. All right, read that. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Come on. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow mm -hmm. and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Read. And thy desire. And thy what? Desire. Read. Shall be to thy husband. To thy husband. Thy desire shall be to thy husband. In Psalms it said you would worship him. That's what you do. We worship Christ. Y'all worship the godly man. Why did Paul say that? He said, follow me. Why? Because I follow Christ. There it is. <laughs> and it's, that's, it's that simple. That's all it's talking about. All right, let's go 1 Corinthians 11 and 8 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. Come on. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. And another example, Paul, he said that because he was worthy of it. Do you understand? He was worthy of it. A lot of brothers ain't worthy of that. That's why some sisters, they got a problem respecting the man, right? Because he says he's going to keep the commandments, but he don't. But you know a scripture I don't want. Give me that, Sirach 26. It always go both ways, sisters. Give me that, uh, 26 to 23. Because I know what they're thinking. They're like, oh, well, he don't deserve it. Paul, he was an a apostle to Gentiles. He risked his life. He died for Christ. Yeah, he deserved it. All right, so if you laying up with a brother in this truth that you don't think deserves it, this is this is what God say about you. Read what you got. Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 23. Uh -huh. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. There it is right there. All right, so guess what? If you don't see him as worthy of it, you better... You better, uh, uh, what's that, uh, commune upon your own bed and do some thinking, do some soul searching, and see if you could win him over like it says in 1 Peter the third chapter. That's what you need to do. Because it's obvious that you're with him for a reason, because you ain't right, he ain't right. So who's going to be the righteous? Who's going to play their role? Because a lot of sisters, they like to, um, if their husband comes short on a lot of things, they like to fill that void. That's not your place, sister. Your place is to be submissive, you understand, and show a good example to win him over. That's your place. And don't be mad at him. You the one laid up with him, and you the one who knew who he was before you got with him. So, gotcha, you understand? I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing. 
But it's true though. That's how sisters be. Little side said my line. <laughs> no, sir. You ain't you ain't married yet. You don't know you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let's go back. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse eight. All right, first Corinthians eleven and eight. First Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse eight. Come on. For the man is not of the woman. But the woman of the man. Uh huh. Neither was the man created for the woman. Right. The woman. The man was not created for the woman. All right. So sisters, stop getting upset when he puts his foot down. That's another thing. Sisters be complaining. Uh, he not doing what he's supposed to do. But when he start putting his foot down, you got a problem with it. Y'all sisters ain't right. That's why you're the weaker vessel. That's why you got to get led because y'all don't y'all don't know how to lead yourself. And you sisters that don't have. Uh, husbands, that's why Paul said, be a follower of me as I'm, as I'm a follower of Christ. The leaders got to be your heads because y'all sisters ain't right. You ain't right. And that's okay because God sent us here as the image of God to set you in order. That's what the Bible says. Get mad. Read it. Neither was the man created for the woman. Come on. But the woman for the man. But the woman for the man. But the woman for the man. Read. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Right. She has power on her head because of the angels. You would be thinking like angelic. No. Give me that in 2 Ezra 1. Give me that in 2 Ezra chapter 1. And I believe start at 39. All right. It's all going to lead back to the order established in verses 1 and 2. All right, read that. Second Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 39. Unto whom I will give for leaders. For what? For leaders. For what? Leaders. Leaders. Paul was a leader of the congregation. Right. You understand? Read it again. Unto whom will I give for leaders? Read. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Oseas, Amos, Micaiah, Joel, Abadus, and Jonas. Right. Who are these people? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, O.C., or Hosea, Amos, uh, Micah, Joel, um, Abdias, jo Jonah. Read. Nahum, Abekuk, Zophanias, uh -huh. Agias. These are all the prophets. These are our forefathers right here. Read. Zachary and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. Right. These leaders, these men, they are called angels of the Lord. And then give me the one in um, Samuel 29. 1 Samuel 29 and verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 29 and verse 9. Come on. And Achish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight. As an angel of God. As an angel of God. Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 10. Come on. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angel. Right. She's going to have guidance because that's what the leaders will do. They will be there to guide them spiritually. Just like we read in Numbers 30, when the father... Heard her prayer and said nothing? All right, that's fine. And then the father disallowed it because it was nonsense. That's what the leaders are there for. And they're supposed to entreat them as fathers, as the angels of the Lord. All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.